Local programming on KRWG Public Media made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. This is KRWG Public Media, TV, radio, online, news that matters. Now, across the Mesilla Valley and the borderland, the stories that shape our community. From the KRWG Broadcast Center at New Mexico State University, this is Newsmakers. Welcome to this special edition of Newsmakers, the best of living here. I'm Fred Martino. Today we take a closer look at a few museums in southern New Mexico. Each one covers an area of significance, from agriculture and art to planes that once flew the skies. And we take a look back at a former stop along the Santa Fe Railway. Our museum here in Deming, New Mexico is called Deming Luna Members Museum. And it was given that name because of the city of Deming, the county of Luna, and from the members Indians. The building itself was originally an armory for the Camp Cody guys that were stationed here as a training base back in the early 1900s. We had the military troops counting through 30 to 40,000 that had come into Deming, and they did use this building as their armory. After the fellows had left, the USO came in, and then it was used actually as a social building for the soldiers to come to. The particular room that we are sitting in right now, the soldiers would come in here and enjoy basketball, ran laps up and around, and they also slept here. All of the exhibits are special to this county and the surrounding areas. Each one depicts something of our natural history, as well as different cultures that have come into the county of Luna. We have multiple requests for the Membrino Indian Collection. A lot of them come in especially for that on their different trips through this part of the country. Within the different displays of the museum in back, what we refer to as the transportation area, it depicts a lot of the, the old cars that were once used here in Deming as well as around the country. We do have some very old fire engines and all of our railroad history as well. It depicts that Deming first started in 1881 with the joining of the second transcontinental railroad with the driving of the Silver Spike. The military room has all of the different types of attire that the soldiers once wore to the different wars that were fought. We try to pay tribute to all of our veterans. One of the other exhibits that we have is the school exhibit, and that actually has two displays combined. We have one that contains the sports and the one that contains more of the educational side of it. On the sports side, we have some very interesting pictures that depict the very early attire of those who played sports and showing the, the football without helmets to the, the current ones. And it always gives everyone a chuckle that it comes through that once played sports and can fully imagine maybe what it would have been like to play sports at that time.
TripAdvisor for the second year in a row now has nominated us as a five-star attraction and we want to invite any and all to come. It is free. We do run on donations and our visitors are most generous as well as our community. If you'd like to learn more about the Deming Luna Members Museum, you can visit our website at www.lunacountyhistoricalsociety.com. Here's a lot shyer than this one. Head center, it breaks fast for me. One, two, three sides for the crown. Okay, what we're going to do is make some wafer cookies, and we're going to, we've got some cookie dough that we made up, and we roll it into little balls, and each one of these balls will be a cookie. We'll put one on this side and one on this side, and then we'll squish her down. 
count to 10, 1,001, 1,002. 1,010. Okay, now let's do it one more time. 1,001. 1,002, 1,003, 1,010. They're done. All right, we right. got cookies. We got wafer cookies. We got cookies. Those are even better. They, they're getting better and better. I know. <laughs> Whoa! Everybody get one? Right. So you can see big veins like this, normally it's a big, deep well. First thing that strikes you is the beauty of it, by far. You look at these pieces and you realize you can't really believe almost that nature created these beautiful things. Nothing's man-made, we didn't create any of them. Just the awe-striking ability of it. Um, and then you can start looking a little closer and start getting away the science of the fact. So once you see the beauty, then you can see, okay, how did this happen? Where did these certain animals live? When did these trees live? You know, What was the environment like? What was our past history millions of years back like? We start at the beginning of geologic time, um, so the beginning of our fossil record, which um, our first piece, our oldest piece, is three billion years old. Um, we have abandoned iron formation from about that old, um, which were single-celled organisms live in the ocean. And then you go all the way up our age with our mammals and those kind of things. You go through the entire geologic history, and we've got examples from each time period, so you really get a sense of how things change, how we went from these single-celled things up to things starting to come onto land, to our big dinosaurs, and then our dinosaurs extinction to what survived after. You know, we get our mammals and our, we have a really cool crab. <laughs> that it's very neat that's from that time period too. Our variety of petrified wood, we have from all over the country, especially we, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, we focus on those. We've also got a few scattered from around the world as well, Argentina, we've got some from Indonesia, all over. And then our unique fossils as well and our minerals. Mr. Zul picked things for their beauty and for their uniqueness. We've got nothing subpar, everything is quite amazing. We've got things that most other museums wouldn't have. Majority of our things are, we ask that you not touch. There's oils on our hands that keep our hands from getting dry, our skin from getting dry, and if everyone touched our pieces, then the break, rocks would start breaking down. But some of our pieces are very sturdy, like our logs and those things. The logs, if they're sitting on the ground, we've even got benches that are made out of our petrified wood, those are fine. We're okay with people touching that. So the Neo Magic exhibition came about um, through a call to the student body of New Mexico State University. Um, and what we did was we asked for students to um, submit images of their artworks that were either inspired directly by the Zool collection here on campus or by the natural world. And so we've got a wide variety of media that are being used to talk about geological time and as well as the Earth's history. So we have paintings, um, we have drawings, we have edited photography, we have sculptures. Um, it's really a lot of different pieces. This piece was not made specifically for the exhibition, but it fits so well with the themes that you see here at the Zool Collection, particularly the ammonites with their spiral shape. It gives them both practical experience in the field, which they need, 
uh, as emerging artists and also gives them an opportunity to uh, show their artworks to their friends, families, and mentors and get accustomed to talking about their practices uh, with the people around them. Beyond my expectations. I really uh, wasn't sure where we were coming because my uh, brother-in-law said we were coming to look at some geodes. And uh, so when I saw all the wood, I, I want to take one home and make it a coffee table. <laughs> All our NMSU museums were always free. Also, you can give uh, me a call or email. Email is zool at nmsu.edu. And um, I'm always glad to answer questions, give tours. Our tours are also free, so if you want a tour, no matter the group, no matter the size, no matter the age, I can do it all. Welcome to War Eagles Air Museum. We're uh, a real gem in the desert southwest. We have 64,000 square feet of airplane hangar. We have um, 30 plus airplanes. We have over 50 cars and uh, have a real experience in history and education here. The uh, War Eagles Air Museum was uh, originally funded and started by the co-founders John and Betty McGuire from El Paso, Texas, who were looking for a place to display their private collection. Our mission here at War Eagles Air Museum is to preserve and restore and display historically significant automobiles and aviation equipment. It's important to future generations here at War Eagles, we feel, because as the years pass, so do the remaining remnants of World War II history and later. Um, there are fewer airplanes flying, there's fewer artifacts to be displayed, and we want to remind everybody that we should never forget the experiences of World War II and later. You know, War Eagles Air Museum faces challenges primarily from two areas. One is that the public today demands more information quicker, and they want to see and they want to touch and they want to feel and they want to hear. The um, museum of the future is going to have to be much more interactive. We have interactive displays now. For example, we've got a helicopter that will talk to you and you can listen to the engine roar. And uh, the second challenge is that faced by many other nonprofits. We have a limited staff, we have limited funding, and basically we are 501 C3 but that doesn't mean anything except tax exempt. We still have operating expenses. Uh, we still have to pay the electric bill and the water bill. But um, we have other expenses and somehow, some way, we usually make those work. War Eagles is funded by admission charges, by cash donations, by membership dues, and you can become a member here at War Eagles Air Museum, and by party room rental. It's a wonderful place to have a party for large or small groups. We're constantly working on, um, on projects here at the museum. We have the formation, in fact, of the Experimental Aircraft Associations, the EAA, provides a Young Eagles program that uh, interests kids in aviation for the future and gets them interested in aviation and in fact gets some free airplane rides. We have some very popular airplanes in fact. We've got a P-51 Mustang. We have a TF-51 Mustang, which is a twin seat, twin control Mustang. And uh, we have a Corsair, we have an Avenger. Uh, they're all popular just depending on people's background and interest and experience. You know, aircraft are pretty much like children. It's tough to have a favorite. If you don't tell anybody else, uh, it's the Corsair. We have a desire to uh, attract all of the volunteers that we can, but primarily what you see here at War Eagles Air Museum is done by volunteers. Uh, you can uh, volunteer here at War Eagles for 
various jobs within the organization, everything from sweeping floors to cleaning airplanes. It's all important. For more information about War Eagles Air Museum, uh, you can go to our website, www.war-eagles-air-museum.com or uh, look at our Facebook page. Railroad Museum is one of four city museums. Our mission is to talk about the, how the railroad affected the area and help the, the Mesilla Valley grow. This building, it was built in 1910. It lasted until 1968 for passenger service and 1988 for freight service. So the depot isn't used anymore, but our yard, which is just outside, is still used by the BNSF for freight traffic today. Visitors that come to this museum, for one thing, they'll kind of get a sense of place here because it is a 1910 structure. We've got some of this uh, historic elements that were within the building. You can see where the passengers uh, would have waited for the trains to come. The railroads in the past, it was kind of a different era. When you would travel, you would dress up. It was an elegant way to travel. Uh, you would dine, you would eat on china. It was a slower pace. It took you longer to get there, but it was very elegant. You had sleeping berths, things like that. It's a bygone era, but it's, it's neat to see, and we show some photographs of what that used to look like here. We have a lot of artifacts here, tickets. You can take the train from our depot right here, just down the line, about five miles to Mesilla Park Depot. That was 26 cents in the early 1960s, and we've heard plenty of people tell us about going to the university from here. But then we also have an area where the kids can play. It's got the models, there's plenty of buttons to push, it's hands-on. We've got the wooden railroad cars that the kids can build their own railroad track. Plenty of stuff for all ages. Uh, we have a lot of adults that like to play with the trains too, not just the kids. We also have two big events a year. We have train day, which is usually the last weekend, last Saturday in April. We gather a, a whole bunch of uh, railroad reenactors and we bring some trains in here and kind of make it a, a day of trains. This museum is free, as are all the museums within the, the city museums that are available on Main Street. Our address is 351 North Mesilla Street. It's on the corner of Mesilla Street and Las Cruces Avenue. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 4.30 each day. Just closed for major holidays and Sundays and Mondays. For our museum, we have a Facebook site. It's for all the museums, but you can get information through them. Or you can call us, 528 three, four, four, four. So there's just something for everybody, anybody's interest with the railroads. Thanks for joining us for the best of living here. This program is only possible because of our producers, Joe Widmer, Ralph Escandone, and Christian Vian. Subscribe to KRWG News on YouTube so you never miss a segment. And if you have an idea for the team, send us an email. The address is feedback at nmsu.edu.